It's after 10 o'clock. It is time for Auto Repair with Personal Care with your host, Matt Gibbs, sitting in the studio right now, ready to answer your questions by way of the phone. The phone number is 622-9622. Matt is the owner of Sunrise Automotive and also Crossroad Auto Sales. So you can buy a car if you can't get yours fixed. And sometimes it just gets to that point where you have to accept reality, which I don't want to do, but I have to. Uh, Hi, Matt. How you doing? Good, Larry. How are you? Good. Something you uh, told us on the radio came in handy the other day for me. What's that? I was at a gas station, and I saw this lady, and she's probably not listening, and she was rather elderly, so I don't want to insult her, but she looked like she was confused. She opened up her hood, and I said, is there anything I can do now? You know me. I'm not you. But I thought, well, I can maybe check her oil or something. And and she said, well, I got a lightning bolt on my dashboard. I don't know what it means. And I said, a lightning bolt? That sounds like maybe electricity. So I said, can you show me? So she got in her car and turned it on. It wasn't electricity. It was the thermos, the thermometer oh. thing. She thought it was a lightning bolt. I said, that's you're overheating. I said, that's maybe you need water in your, in your um, water reservoir thing. And she said, no, my son just put in... The green, and you're supposed to put in the red or whatever the colors are. And I said, wait a minute. That's not good. You're not supposed to mix the colors. Right? Right. And uh, so she said, I knew I shouldn't have let him do that. She was, she was pretty sharp. But uh, I said, it looks filled, but you probably need to get that drained and, and taken care of. She said, what will happen? So I said, now tell me if I told her the right thing. It'll turn to gook. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So I told yeah. her the right thing. It turns to gook. So she, ha- I don't know how far she had to go to get home, but uh, I mean, it won't turn to gook immediately. She has some time. So, but if that happens, you what do you? What's the best thing? Just flush it just all. Just flush out? it all out. Just flush it out and put the put the green in there. The green doesn't turn to gook. The, the the red will turn to gook all by itself. It will. Oh yeah. Now, don't you have to follow the directions that the auto manufacturer gives for which kind you use? Well, you can. I thought or you can, or you can uh, walk a, a dangerous and fine line if you. <laughs> I don't like the. I don't like the Dex Cool. I don't like it. I don't like what That's it does. That's the red one. Yeah, uh, okay. the synthetic antifreeze. But I don't. I don't like what it does to the car. Now, now, if you have a leak, yeah, there's your dog is not going to lick this stuff. It is. I, 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 deadly know, it's no it's you you can't you can't get enough of it in you to become deadly okay i am this is gonna sound crazy but i like i a lot of times when cars come in um this is gonna sound really crazy yeah but like if i think something has like a blown head gasket right uh the oil cap yeah. you know i'll take the oil cap off because no, uh, oil you know coolant's getting inside the cooling system okay all right, I'm sorry. Coolant is getting inside the oil system. Okay, okay. okay. So I'll take. I actually the, knew what you meant. Believe it or not. But I'll take the cap off and I'll taste it. And if I taste sweet or bitter, then I know that coolant's in there. Really? Yeah, because the the Dex Cool is so bitter that you you're you you can't. And the other one is sweet. Sweet. So uh, if I taste it and it's got a sweet taste to it, then I know that coolant's getting in the oil. So really? I don't want people to run, you know, well, open your hoods and start tasting how much. No, know, no, no. Going back to when I was a kid, all I used was water. I, I didn't use anything other than water. Could, couldn't we still do that? Well, Especially you, here in Florida? No, because what happens is it, everything will start to rust then. Oh. And it starts to rust and rot. So you no longer can put water in your room? Oh, you can. If you have to put water in it, put water in it. You know, if, you, if you're in a situation where... But the best thing is pure. No, it's mixing it. Oh, you have to mix, mix it. it. Well, you don't have to mix it, but you want to mix it. Okay. Why? Well, you just want it to. You want it to do. Well, let, let me ask you this: Like, if you got a cold and you go to the drugstore and you buy, let's say you buy Robitussin DM, right? And right, the directions right. are from twelve and up. You know, that take right. two tablespoons. Right. Right. Well, if you drink half the bottle, does it really make it any better, or does it? 
Now does it create other issues? Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Does that apply here? In yeah, car? you don't want to put straight coolant in it. You don't You don't need to put straight coolant in it. You need to do... Is that what it says on the directions? Yeah, it'll tell you, you okay. know, and then you can get a hydrometer and you can measure it if you want to. And okay. You know okay. that it's good to 20 below zero. So getting back to... I'm confused about something because I, I think you were making fun a little bit of me. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I wasn't making fun of you. No, I, don't I was actually bit. making fun of myself, <laughs> no, but tasting you, this stuff. No, 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 no. But when you, when you said, um, if you want to be bold and daring. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. When you said that. Okay, now, uh, you know, coming from a place where I don't know what I'm doing, so I have to depend on instructions. So if the owner's manual says use red or whatever, however it's phrased, you still think it's better to use green. I do. Personally, so why do they say use red? Are they, do they have a, because are they making money from it or something? Well, because that's what the manufacturer has gone to. The manufacturer has gone to this environmentally safer product that the dog next door is not going to lick and not hurt oh. the animal. So they and it's also synthetic and it lasts a hundred thousand miles and it does all this. Ah, you know. okay. But what I have found is that um, it. In the long term of things, the long term effect, way beyond your cars out of the warranty period. You got to understand, manufacturers are not concerned about longevity. They 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 don't really care if the car goes two hundred thousand miles. They prefer it doesn't, right? They, exactly. They want to make sure that the car performs. If the warranty's for five years, fifty thousand miles, okay. that the car performs for five years, fifty thousand miles. That's their goal. Their goal is for you to get through the process of paying for the car and now go buying another car. That's what the manufacturer wants. And those that go and buy new cars, that's what they typically do, buy a new car within two to five years, and they go get another car. So these products that they're putting in, this particular coolant is going to be fine for that for those five years. Gotcha. But the green is more in your favor because it's going to – except the dog might like it and die. Exactly. Night. Okay. Well, it never happened to me. I mean, why would it lick it? Because it's tastes it's, good. It tastes good, it's, and, it, and it, it kind of does because I've tasted it before. <laughs> you know, and that's <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, brake right. brake fluid is by far the worst. Are you? Oh, oh man, that that that's that's revolting. There. Uh, oh, I have so many questions about brake fluid. I, well, never mind. I don't want to take other people's time because you do have some callers coming in. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Thank you for waiting. Yeah, good morning, Matt. Morning. See, uh, what is your opinion on, uh, I, 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 got, I know a fellow that uh, purchased a car about a year and a half, two years ago, and put it in the storage up on blocks, uh, disconnected the battery, and, and he put fresh uh, synthetic oil in the engine with a new filter and everything before he did this. Uh, he's planning on uh, using this car in the near future. Uh, with that oil being new at the time, would you recommend it uh, being changed, or is that oil okay? I think the oil will be okay. I, I don't recommend putting them in storage, putting them on blocks, take disconnecting the battery and just let them sit there. Um, I, 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 my, I would suggest every once in a while start it up, getting, it, getting that, that car to uh, operating temperature, um, run it around the block, move, move things. I'm more concerned about the brake calipers locking up because they've just been sitting there, and 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 not necessarily the fluids, but but you know the whole mechanics of the car. They're, they're yeah. designed to be used. They're designed to, and it just seems like the the longer they sit there, the more stuff happens to them as they sit there. And uh, so I, I'm a, I'm more of the type, you know, get the tires warmed up, get them. Get them rolling. Use the air conditioner. Make the compressor come on. Use the, apply the brakes. You know, drive the car every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, uh, maybe it would be a good idea for him to have the car towed to a sta- uh, to a, a garage and then have it looked over real good before he decides to you know take it on a trip or whatever he's going to do with it. Well, before yeah, if he was taking it on a trip, I would suggest that with anybody. To, you know, I'm fixing to go yeah. on a trip here in a couple of weeks, and my car is coming into the shop, even though. You know, and I'm going to go through yeah. it with a fine tooth comb because yeah. I'm going on a trip. But if yeah. he wants to start it up and run it around and just drive it a little bit and see how everything works, I don't think there's a problem with that. Just just do that. He doesn't need to have that all checked out just to do that. 
Yeah. How, now, uh, getting back to the oil, uh, let, let's say, uh, uh, how long would oil be okay to, uh, you know, without changing it in the car? A couple of years or? Well, you know. Or, or, or what, does, what, what happens to it after a certain period of time? It really depends on the car. What kind of car is it? If, if it's a car with a carburetor, you go in there, you start it up once a week and just yeah. let it run and shut it off. Yeah, I would definitely, I, I wouldn't let that oil stay in that car too long. Uh you know, if it's a fuel injected car and the inject and everything's working exactly the way it should be working, and the fuel pressure regulator's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and everything's operating the way it's supposed to operate, I I don't know if I if it was my car, I wouldn't let the oil sit in there for a couple years. Um, I yeah. would still change it just to just to give me something to do on a Saturday afternoon or something. But you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be if, too if concerned with it. If you don't have a chance to, uh, uh, let's say the car is uh, uh, in a different location than you are, and you have nobody that can start it, it's going to sit there for quite a while. Uh, would, would, would you rec- can you recommend like a, a certain grade of oil that would be better for a car that's not being used, or maybe just drain it and sit, let it sit without oil? No, I would. I would not let it sit without oil. I would definitely. I would definitely not let it sit with no oil. There's no way. Yeah. yeah, and as far as the grade goes, I would just put in there what's what's supposed to be in there. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, I'll uh, I'll get in touch with him, and I, I think what he's going to do is, uh, uh, I think he's going to change that oil because he was worried about it because it was sitting there for so long. But I'll just tell him that I talked to somebody that knows what they're talking about, and they said the oil is probably fine, you know, because it hasn't been started up or anything; it's just been sitting there. Yeah, that's that's the thing that concerns me is it's not been started up. I, I'd be I'd be more concerned about that than anything. What would, what would you have to be concerned about? Uh, what the, would be the uh, most interest that would go go wrong with the car? Well, I mean, it's just it's not designed just to sit there. It's not made to sit there. They're designed yeah. to move. They're designed to run. They're. De- I mean, you stop and think about what your car goes through in a, in a day. You know, just. You know that's how they're manufactured. That's how they're designed to operate. And it seems like you know I got a lot of guys that have motorhomes that that they only take the motorhome out a couple times a year, and then they, and and because it, they take it out a couple times a year, they got these issues. One of the big things is the fuel system. If he's if he's putting regular pump gas in there, all that alcohol, all the ethanol, what is it doing? Just sitting there. Yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. know, I would if I'm if I have a car that that I'm going to have in storage that I'm not going to use very much. I'm going to there's no doubt in my mind I'm going and I'm going to have to pay a little bit more, but I'm not yeah. I'm going to put non-alcohol gas in that car and that's all that's going to be in there. Um, yeah. You know, it's would you recommend would you recommend using like a staple like you would do Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely cuz that's the, the see the fuel pump and if it's a newer car the fuel pump's an electric pump it's just sitting in the gas tank it's not it's not doing anything it's just sitting there the the windshield washer pump is just sitting there the yeah, water pump yeah, is yeah. just sitting there all these things that are made to move and pump and 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 operate are just they're just sitting there and that that okay. that's when you start having problems Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. And uh, your calls are welcome, and you are invited to call the number 622-9622, but we do have to take a little break, so if you call right now, you'll be on hold for about two and a half minutes. We'll be right back with Matt. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A nice day today. Sunshine mixed with clouds, the high 79 to 83. The partly cloudy skies tonight, lows ranging from 63 to 70 along the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny and warm with a high of 82 to 86. And on Wednesday, partly sunny, very warm and more humid high, 84 to 88. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Domestic violence has been in the news a lot lately. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. How timely. The voice of South Marion in Bellevue reminds us that 85% of domestic violence victims are women. Almost one-third of female homicide victims are killed by an intimate partner. And many of the intimate partner abusers also abuse children in the household. If abused, seek help. If you witness abuse, report it. 
let's face it, nowadays it can be hard to find American-made products, and that's something that Cabinet Sales of North Florida is well aware of. That's why they're an authorized dealer of Wellborn Cabinetry, family-owned and American-made since 1961. Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your answer for complete turnkey kitchen remodels and whole house cabinetry. Their cabinets are finished with solvent-based enamels for a long-lasting finish that's second to none. Available in an incredible selection of door styles and colors to choose from to turn your dream kitchen into a reality. In-house design and drawing services are available. Come by and see our displays for yourself at the Floors of the Villages, 3935 County Road 216 in Oxford or Exquisite Design Kitchen and Bath in Bellevue, right across the street from the Bellevue Library. So whether you're looking for bookcases, kitchen, bath, or outdoor kitchen, Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your one-stop source of quality cabinets. For a free estimate, call 352-427-2647. That's 352-427-2647. Cabinet Sales of North Florida. All right, 20 minutes after 10 o'clock, Matt Gibbs is here to answer your automobile questions. And Matt, you have somebody waiting patiently on hold. Good morning. You're on there with Matt. Yes, how you doing this morning, Matt? Good. How are you? All right, sir. Hey, I got a question. Uh, what is the best way to look for an engine, you know, for uh, replace another engine? Well, I, I went, go ahead. There's, there are several ways I, I deal with it. Um, I always look at the car as a whole, as a whole project. I don't if something comes in and it's got needs an engine replacement. I look at the car itself and say, does this warrant a used engine, uh, a remanufactured engine, or would it be the best to rebuild the engine that's in the car? So, just depending on the circumstance, the financial situation, um, and 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 your preference. I, you know, there's several different options that are available to to people. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you know, I was looking for one for my son's car. He got a, like a '97 Pontiac Grand Prix, and a guy told me he had one, and I went and looked at it, but it looked a little shady. So you know, and the guy assured me that oh, it was low mileage. Then another guy worked there and said, no, I don't think that got low mileage on it, you know. So. <laughs> right. I, I don't I, like, I don't ever buy an engine off the street, to be honest with you. Never. Oh, okay. I I have some sources. Um, you know, LKQ, which everybody around in this area, know, they knew them as Damrons. Okay. You know, okay. they're the LKQ. Um, one of the advantages I have as as a shop owner and dealing with you know so many different vendors is that if i call lkq i kind of get to pick the cream of the crop because i spend so much money a year with them ah, okay. so they kind of they kind and and there's other, and it's not just me it's it's other garages and and stuff in town so uh, i can call up i've talked to the same guy his name is doug i've talked to doug for 20 years you know i've i've had a, i have a great relationship with him and if i if i'm in the market looking for a used engine i call doug and doug says hey i got you know these motors i got this mileage and da 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 and i and and, and i think out of all the years that, that i've been buying motors from them guys i've had an issue with one I actually two, wow. and, and the second one was something that one of my guys did. Wow. It wasn't their fault; it was our fault. And uh, but, okay. um, you know that that's you know, and for a ninety like ninety seven Grand Prix, um, that car would have to be have some kind of sentimental value. It would have to have it would have to be a really nice car for me to say say, oh, let's put a Jasper motor in this. Or let's take your right. motor out and, and let's have it rebuilt. Sometimes I'll I'll do the uh, I'll have them locally rebuilt, just for mm -hmm. the fact that there it may only be a couple hundred dollars difference between buying a used motor and having that one completely rebuilt like new. So right. you know, and I I look at all those things and and try to get the best value for the customer. Oh okay okay, uh, where's AQ uh, located? Uh, LKQ is in Crist River. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and it, it used to be Damron's, but they're actually located in Crist River. Uh, locally, if that particular engine, what is it, a 3.1? Uh, 3.8, 3,800. Oh, it's a 3,800 motor. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Uh, you could also th- those are those are real popular. The three ones, the third, the three point eight are the real popular engines. And you can buy one of those for relatively pretty inexpensive. Uh, you could okay. also call after hours here in town. I call okay. I call I would call them too. And and if you call after hours, ask to speak to either Jimmy or Danny. Okay, thank you. All righty. All right, sir. Thank you for your help this morning. You're welcome. Sounds like a big job, putting a whole engine in. Wow. Does that include the air conditioner and everything? No. No, no that's <laughs> just the engine. That sounds like a big job. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, it's... Not that big? Not to you? No. What is it? A few bolts in your... In your oh, that's, that's more than a few bolts, Larry. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I have a particular way we do things, you know. We... <laughs> I would hope to think that my guys have to take out more than a couple bolts. Do you load it from the top down or the bottom up? Uh, it depends. It depends on what kind of car it is. Oh, really? This one here on a on that particular car, yeah. it would go in through the top. And you have to take the hood off. Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just, just take it and put it off to the side. See. Something like something now Cadillacs. To do an engine in a Cadillac, you have to drop everything out the bottom. You have to drop the transmission, the suspension, really? the engine. It all comes down as an assembly, then separate everything on the ground. So they're, they're a lot more technical. So know. a backyard guy couldn't really do a Cadillac. How well, would he, he could if he had the, the stuff. How would you lift it? Well, you jack, him, jack it. It's it would jack be, it pretty it would high. Be a, it would be a pain. It would. There was no doubt I mean, about at it. At least you have a, a thing in your garage you can lift it up. But you know what? I, I, I see people attempt to do some crazy stuff all the time. <laughs> so what is the better uh, lift in a, in a garage? Is it the one with the big metal pole in, in the middle, or is it the one that goes up from the sides? Well, they, they pretty much, because of all the EPA and all the laws and stuff, they, yeah. they've pretty much... Uh, the in-ground lift that you used to see at the local service The big stations. shiny column? You know, yeah, the one that would go down in the ground. Right. Yeah, those, those are pretty – you don't use them. Oh, they don't have them nah, anymore? we don't use them anymore just because – Hey, there's an oil tank in the ground because they're hydraulic. Right. You know, right. so there's oil inside the ground and the seals leak all the time. And so we don't use That's them. not good. Do they ever fall? Uh, yeah. I, I've seen two cars fall off the lift in, in my years of d- doing this stuff. What, what happened? How did they fall? It was, uh, well, one of them, the lift was real, real new. And I guess the seal was real, real tight. And it caused it to lift. Oh, man. To Did jump shake? up and down, up and down. And finally, the car just kind of threw itself Oh, my off God. It. And it ruined the car. And it ruined the car. And, uh, yeah. And, nobody and, got hurt, I hope? No, nobody got hurt. And uh, I, I saw, a, uh, we had a veterinarian. So it, it wasn't at our shop. It was when I worked for a dealership. Yeah. And uh, a veterinarian came in. And, you know, they put their coolers on the back like it was a pickup right, truck. Right, they right, did right. Yeah. And they lifted it. Just uh, when he set the lift, he lifted the cab, and the, and the bed typically just kind of goes up with everything. Well, there was so much weight in the bed that it broke the frame right behind the cab. Oh man! It did like that. Oh man! That took us a long time to get that car down. Holy mackerel! What did the vet say? Um, I hope y'all have good insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It, it, nobody got hurt. No. Nobody got hurt. I've never seen anybody get hurt. You know, what I happened? thought somebody got hurt one time. What happened? We had a dual post lift where there was a there was a post in the front and a post in the back, and the front one you'd set for the front wheels and the back one you set for the back wheels and lift up the the car would lift like this. You had to it two like controls separately, okay. right? And 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 because we're at, we're always in a hurry, we're always you know. We figure out, figure out ways to make the lifts come down by themselves as yeah. we're as we're doing something else. Well, the the contraption that the guy had for the front, st- st- it, it 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 came it came off, and the car just kept going up further and further and further and further up in the back and the front. Oh the my car god! Just slid off and there was somebody the, back there. Yeah. Well, he we thought he was in the front of the car, man, sure. but he wasn't. Wow. Thank God. Because wow. it would have been smashed. You know, I, t- I told you my brother had a, a close call when he was a mechanic. A car lurched forward and, and hit him in the in, in the middle, in the midsection. Yeah. Where's your music here? Oh, there it is. <laughs> 
So you got to worry about cars falling off. I got to worry about the wrong music playing. <laughs> We're talking two different worlds. Matt, what's your phone number? My phone number is 352-690-1993. All right. Uh, call us if you need Matt's number repeated. Uh, the best thing I can tell you is Matt is who we go to. I trust Matt. Matt has done my car right and me right and everybody else here. Thank you, Matt. Fox News Thank Radio, you. I'm Pat O'Neill. A video journalist who contracted Ebola while in Liberia has arrived in Omaha, Nebraska, the fifth American to return to the U.S. for treatment. This is questions come about possibly screening people entering the U.S. from international flight. Fox News Radio's Evan Brown. We'll look at anything that could increase the safety of Americans. CDC Chief Dr. Thomas Frieden, though no decision has been made, currently passengers are screened before leaving Africa. The search for the missing Malaysian Airlines jet is resuming. The search has been on hold for four months so that ships could map the seabed. It's up to four miles deep in places. Malaysia is paying for this ship and two others from the Netherlands are to join the hunt later this month. Fox Radio's Alistair Wanklin. Safety officials are looking into complaints that the power-assisted steering failure could cause crashes in three Ford mid-sized models from 2010 through 2012.